All right, welcome back for another installment of Rotating Superconductors and Gravity Control and Gravity Impulses and all that good stuff. I'm just going to quickly explain this uh, new setup I have here. So, as in the last video, I'm going to use the same rotating uh, device. Um, and in here, though, I have a new... Not a new, but a different, uh, I have the YBCO superconducting puck. And it's a lot thicker. It's about a centimeter thick. And about uh, two inches diameter. So I'm going to spin that up. And go through a range of, of speeds. And watch for, try and keep an eye on the RPM. And what I'm going to do is just... Um, as it's spinning up, I'm going to place it underneath this setup here. So um, this is a lot closer. The test mass, which is just some water in that little beaker down there, is going to be a lot closer to the superconductor compared to the last experiment. And according to some of those claims uh, that indicate that there was some sort of a shielding effect from gravity or a slight reduction of up to 2% of the weight of anything above the rotating superconductor. So, um, yeah, so this should be a lot more evident given its greater proximity. So this beaker here is actually, it's sitting on this tray which is suspended just above this glass plate here, which is about a centimeter thick, or for those who prefer inches, that's about a half, about a half an inch, roughly, a little under. So this uh, this shroud here, which is just uh, was an ice cream bucket keeps any air currents away from this helps to shield it from any air currents and this coil here uh, is kind of a makeshift RF coil and what I got going in here is this uh, range of frequencies I have set from 1 to 10 megahertz and so it's just going to keep sweeping through those frequencies um, so what's, what it's displaying right now is, uh, two volts, four volts peak to peak. And what, what I have my scope hooked up to is, uh, well, there's three conductors in these, in this sleeve here. This is household wiring. Uh, so the scope is hooked up to one of these conductors in here. So there's kind of a straight, you know, ordinary transformer type action going on here so that's what you're seeing on the screen uh, so it's just being fed in the waveform is being fed in here from this signal generator um, so I'm not sure kinda what the RF power density is here in the center I'm not sure how to measure that or if I have the right equipment at the moment what I can tell you is that I'm feeding uh, a 10 volt, I believe it's 10 volts peak to peak coming out of here, going into this, into this coil. And now there's a fair bit of guesswork going on here because uh, I don't have, I don't have specifications at the moment. But what I was told by uh, Glenn Robertson on the last APEC conference was that apparently Podklinoff used a three megahertz RF field while he was rotating the superconductor. So I'm gonna just, that's, that's why I'm scanning from one to 10 megahertz. Maybe I'll hit a, uh, a resonant point. And so uh, like the last experiment, what I have is this mechanical balance here. Uh, this laser pointer is set up here to, to indicate any slight 
change in weight down there or any forces that might be developed on that on that water down there and this is the laser point here and it's uh, it's quite sensitive the whole balance set up and I'll have another camera on this when I do the experiment I just want to point out about this laser dot here it's uh, the camera's not focusing very well so sorry about that but this is uh, it's right at 20, 3 to 20 centimeters here, 30 centimeters here, so it's about in between 20 and 30. And the bottom here is just at the one inch mark of this ruler here. So I'm going to now proceed with the experiment. Dum dee doo dee 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 dum dee dee. Might actually need some more. Let's see if it's superconducting here. Nope. More. Need more. Oh, I feel I feel the Meisner thingy. I feel the Meisner effect coming on here. But I want to show you skeptic, skeptic, skepticians that it's superconducting. Okay. So, this will be hard to show on camera, but uh, these magnets here are floating. I wish I had something on Ferris. See these magnets here? See that? There, right there. See? The magnets are levitating. Okay, so, and much, much better than that other disc I was using. So, yeah. We are in superconductivity mode. Commencing with experiment. Commencement beginning now. All right, up to one volt on the motor. Two volts. I'm going to take an RPM reading here. 3,000 to 2487, 25, 2600 RPM. Okay. I'm going to shoot it up. Four thousand RPM. I'll try and get it up higher. It is a little top heavy, and I just nicked the glass plate there momentarily. So, um, okay, speeding up. Four volts on the motor. Four point three volts, seven watts, four thousand six hundred RPM. Slowing down. Okay, 
I'm gonna add just a little bit more nitrogen here. We'll try this again. Quick test for I think it lost it. Gotta cool it down again. Cooling down. Oh, there it is. Lost its cool there for a moment. Probably going to have to repeat this a couple times because it's, it's tricky. Tricky to do this. Like all anti-gravity experiments or gravity experiments. All right, I'm feeling the magnetic repulsion here, so it tells me it's superconducting. We're going to give this another uh, another shot here. In three, two, one, speeding up. One volt on the motor, accelerating, accelerating now hard, five volts on the motor, and I'm just going to hold it steady here because the RF field is changing too. It's uh, going from 1 to 10 megahertz. Over a period of 120 seconds. Holding steady, 5 volts on the motor, which is... Uh, Four thousand three hundred, four thousand eight hundred RPM. Forty nine hundred RPM. Okay, the RF just reset to one megahertz, increasing. Just holding it steady here under the beaker or under the glass plate, I mean. RF is still increasing. I think my motor's burning out. test I have it set up to um, the same water being supported here on this digital scale okay and how much does it weigh it weighs 84.64 grams. Okay, I'm ready to start rotation here. OK, 
Okay, starting at one megahertz. Spinning up here to um, three thousand four hundred or twenty two eighty RPM, sorry, thirty two fifty six RPM. Is changing at the scale at the moment. So I'm just holding everything steady here under the under the water, and frequency is increasing. Soon it will reset. Soon. Let's see if it's still superconducting. Oh, actually, I actually don't think it is. Let me add a bit more nitrogen. Six two grams. I'm going to turn the sweep off here and just dial it into three megahertz. So showing uh, good signal there. Three megahertz. Superconducting. Let's give her. Scale turned off, better turn that back on. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's see, 3.4 volts on the motor. Three megahertz RF. RPM is 3,450, or 3,500, I mean. 36, 48, 37, 32, 37, 31. Speed it up a bit more here. It would go faster if there wasn't vibration. 4067. Uh, just under 4100 RPM. And now I'm going to turn it down. Just shut it off here. See if we're still superconducting. Not superconducting anymore. Here's a little bonus feature. It's just a weak ceramic disc magnet. It's levitating quite well here, actually. <laughs> 